cocky, my boy. No matter how good you are. Don't ever let him see you coming. That's the gas, my friend. All right, man, what's going on, guys? Uh, who really won the fight? Let's start, start off with Manny Pacquiao versus Jeff Horn. Who really won that fight? Okay, this is all I'm going to say. This is all I'm going to say on that fight, okay? My aunt saw that fight, you know. She's, she, don't know no, she don't know nothing about boxing. You know, she, she might say she does, but she don't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? Cat, cat, casual fan. Uh, definitely a casual fan. Don't know who's fighting, when they fighting. Only time she sees somebody fighting, and when somebody uh turns the television. Okay, that's the only time. Okay, and her perception of the fight was that uh Manny Pacquiao. She didn't even know this dude's name. Well, uh, got whooped. That's what she said. He, he got his A whooped. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he got beat up. And uh, for me, man, that's that's what I saw, man. I saw Manny Pacquiao get beat up versus uh, Jeff Horn. Uh, yeah, Manny Pacquiao came on late. That was like the ninth round. That was pretty much it. Thought Jeff Horn was out, almost out of there, but Jeff Horn was muscling him. He was pumping that jab. And you know he pretty much you know bullied Manny Manny Pacquiao man you know he bu- he bullied him and he pushed him around. And, yeah, he he might be limited in skill and whatnot, but uh, Man- Manny Pacquiao picked him man. You know he picked him. Uh, that's not the fight we wanted to see. That's not the fight his uh, promoter Bob Aaron wanted wanted. You know that's that's something uh, Manny and his team Michael Kuntz, uh you know his uh, manager Michael Kuntz, whatever his name is. They they wanted it. They they thought that was a safe bet, you know what I'm saying? Uh, fighting Jeff Jeff Horn, and you know, um, and they underestimated him, man. They underestimated him, and they they didn't do their homework. They just didn't do their homework. Um, I I don't know what it is they saw in Jeff Horn that made made them think they're just gonna go over there and and beat this dude up. But uh, it's a good chance Manny didn't uh, prepare properly for the fight or anything. Probably thinking about, oh, Jeff Horn, school teacher. But can't you can't look at people, man, and go and get in that ring. I mean, they they got to that to that point for a reason, and they and they gunning for you, and and they wel- wel- welcome welcome you home. And, and see, that's this 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 the thing. That, um, this, <laughs> this the funny thing about <laughs> about Manny, man. You know what? Uh, I I used to play f- football, man. High school football, bro. And my coach used to tell me, he was like, you know what, man? When 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 your opponent have you come in, and it's their homecoming. That's that's a sign of disrespect. That's a sign of disrespect right there, man. When you when when you go into somebody's backyard. And you got everybody celebrating. It's like a homecoming celebration, and you know they got the pom poms out. They got all this. It's cause it's because they think they're gonna win. You know what I'm saying? And Manny Pacquiao didn't see the setup. He didn't see the setup, man. He didn't see the setup at all, man. It was a homecoming for Jeff Horn out there. Where the hell is Jeff Horn out in Australia? That's Australia. Then they had that fight in Sydney. You know. It was a homecoming because I, I don't know if you guys know to notice this or uh, know, uh, know this or not, but what they do down there is that for like uh, these promoters, man, especially like New Luz- Zealand and Australia, I, I've I've heard of this like several times with boxers, like I think it was Antonio Mundane, Joseph Parker as of late. But what they'll do is like they they'll subsidize a professional boxing match especially if it's like a whole a high profile boxing match because it's supposed to be for like entertainment for the public you know 
So they'll they'll give one of these up uh, the the promoters out there, you know, like maybe you know some money, you know, make it half half a million here, or, you know, uh, a couple hundred thousand there, you know, or whatnot, just to uh, help put put on the fight. You know what I'm saying? Bring the fight down there to uh, Australia. You know, it's an island, man. It's out in the middle of nowhere in <laughs> New Zealand. You know what I'm saying? Who the hell wants to come down there? So, but the, so, but what the government will do is try to so like subsidize, you know, some of those boxing matches. So the fact that they was able to get Manny Pacquiao down there, you know what I'm saying? It's only so many people down there, but they got they they gave Manny Pacquiao whatever he wanted. It's like, look, man, come on down here. Come on down to Australia. Come on, come down under. You know, that that was a big setup, man. You know what I'm saying? He didn't see that. He's like, man, what? Damn, I, I I'm going down there. You know what I'm saying? In this dude's backyard, he's probably thinking to himself, easy money. But no, man, that's his homecoming. You know, ain't nobody's gonna invite you to the homecoming and expect to lose. They're gonna be looking to win. So, but anyway, man, moving on to. Uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez versus Triple G, man. Who really won that fight? Well, you know what? I'm looking at these uh, statistics, man. These these numbers, man. As far as like power punches, right? Power punches landed. We ain't gonna go off total punches because Golovkin, uh, going by that assessment, uh, probably would have won the fight with a jab and everything like that. But you know, people don't respect the jab, so. They like power punches, you know what I'm saying? They like power punches. They like the crash cart, you know, boxing and stuff like that. So, and a lot of people don't think the jab is all that all that much in value and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? When a guy is uh, boxing and stuff like that. So, uh, let's 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 discount the jabs cuz, you know, uh Canelo, he was jabbing too, you know. So, anyway, let's look at this. Um punch that power punch. Let's go by power punch cuz it I mean that's what hurts, right? Power punches. Round one, uh, Alvarez got like five to two. Round two, Alvarez seven and five. Round three, Alvarez uh, eleven to eight. Now, the thing about that is like when I first saw this fight, man, like the first three rounds, I had saw Canelo Alvarez winning. Okay. Very interesting. Now, this is where he started to pull away a little bit with uh, GGG winning some rounds, okay? Round four, uh, Golovkin, 9-5, you know, regarding power punches. We're talking about power punches here. Uh, Round, let's say round four, yeah, round five, uh, Golovkin, 13-9. Round six, Golovkin, uh, twelve to eight. So where are we at? We tied right, right up to around round six. We tied. You know, uh, Alvarez got three. Golovkin got, got uh three. That's by the time, you know, Alvarez start laying up on the ropes. Now let's go from. So it's three to three, yo. So uh, let's say seven, eight, and nine. Where are we at here? Round seven. Golovkin, man, on power punches. Uh, seven to four. Golovkin. Round eight, Alvarez, man. Uh, t- ten to nine, man, on the punches, on the power punches, man. Ten to nine, so it's, so it's tied up, <laughs> so it's tied up again. And <laughs> so, uh, around nine, Golovkin, Golovkin pulls ahead. You know, Golovkin pulls ahead. Thirteen, eleven, Golovkin, round nine. So he's up, he's up five four now. Round ten. Round ten now. Uh Alvarez. Alvarez. He he pulls out, you know, he, he you know, he ties it up again. He's got fifteen power punches to eleven power punches. That's Alvarez. Okay? That's Alvarez. Now, we're going to the championship round. It's five five, y'all. It's five five. Okay? So round eleven. Alvarez on power punches. He he landed ten. Golovkin landed nine. Okay. Round twelve. Round twelve. Alvarez. 
Alvarez landed 19. Golovkin landed 12. Alvarez 7 5. Saul Canelo Alvarez based on power punches. Yep. And then if you add defense, because that's a part of scoring, Golovkin usually um, Golovkin usually lands 46% of his power punches, but against uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez, he only landed 32% of his power punches. Okay, 32% Saul Canelo, Saul Canelo Alvarez landed 42% of his power punches. And defense is a part of scoring. And that's why a lot of people had Saul Canelo Alvarez um, winning. And that's why I had Saul Canelo Alvarez winning. I thought he won the fight. So he's the guy who re- who really won the fight. But he got it. He, I mean, it was a draw. But at the end of the day, he walks away the winner because the only guy that really looks bad is uh, tri- Triple G, man. He looks bad, man. The dude looks bad, you know what I'm saying? I mean, for, for, I mean, he's beating up Kell Brook, okay? Um, you know, he, hey, he needs money, you know what I'm saying? I'm not feeding him. And then um, then he goes against uh, Daniel Jacobs, looks human. Uh, I thought he did a good job, man. That jab was good, man, you know what I'm saying? He's got a good jab and stuff like that. Um, you know, uh, he, he did a decent job, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I ain't mad at him for winning that one. You know, maybe Jacobs could have done more or whatever. I don't know. But he, he did go against a power puncher and, and Danny Jacobs. So, I get, you know, he gets credit for that. That's that's a good win as far as his career. Then he gets going against Saul Canelo Alvarez for a chance to be the lineal middleweight champion. I mean, the guy's been hanging around there forever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's not like he created a new bloodline or anything like that. Because, I mean, <laughs> ain't nobody retired or anything like that. And the torch has been passed on to junior middleweights. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, but, yeah, Saul Canelo Alvarez, man, you know, he he, he is the uh, lineal champ at 160. I mean, I mean, they got him ranked number one pound for pound on box rec and probably somewhere else too. So, I mean, it's, it's for a reason. It's for a reason. I'm gonna take a lot of logical guesses for a reason. So, um, yeah, man, great fight though, man. That was a that was a great fight. Uh, he can do it again, man. He can do it again. I. I I I'll take my time, man. You know, time is on Alvarez's side. But but we we'll, we'll see what Golovkin can do. We'll see what Golovkin can do. Uh but yo, man. I mean, people can say what they want about Saul Canelo Alvarez, but every time he was called out, man, somebody called him a uh, like a like a punk or a chicken and say he wasn't ready. That man stepped up to the plate. You can't say that man didn't step up to the plate, man. He forced his hand. He wanted that Mayweather fight. He got it. He got beat up. Uh, you know, De La Hoya didn't want that fight for him, but he was adamant. He's like, man, I want to fight Mayweather, you know, like right now. You know, he want a chance of greatness now. He took that fight, uh, failed. Uh, Laura called him out, you know. <laughs> Yo, man, he and P, and then his people, you know, he listened to his fan base too, man. He listened to his fan base, and he made the Laura fight happen. Uh, I mean, Golovkin never fought Laura, you know. And uh, well, the fight he fought, um, this one, this one, the, the fans are screaming for it. You know, I'm pretty sure his fan base start calling him all kind of names and stuff like that. And he probably and, and when it comes time to take, you know, take care of business and show his mochismo, you know, his cojones, that that guy was out there doing what he had to do, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, so, yeah, man, you know, um, it's, it's great that he stepped up to the plate, Golovkin, I mean, the only thing he can do is move up and try to do something great, man, you know, um, uh, come on, man, you know, it don't make no sense doing that. And most of the middleweights he fought was like small guys, man. So, I mean, he never fought Andy Lee, you know, Peter Quillen. He never, he didn't fight none of those guys, man. 
I guess you got to say it's his fault because he never wanted to give up the lion's share of the money to get, to get the right people up in there. So, yeah, man, you guys let me know what y'all think about that, man. Who really won? Who really won at the end of the day? All right, man, I'll catch y'all later. Bye.